Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is a project that I've been working on, on and off, for a couple of years now. Um, and I'm really not much farther along with it. But I'm only now starting to get some headway. And I'm so far off doing it, uh, let me just introdu introduce it. What it is, is I'm hoping to create some uh, voice recognition uh, uh, software surrounding a PIC a microprocessor without any external uh, EEPROM memory. And it's been very difficult. I've likely thrown away five or six of these boards out of frustration over the years. I've abandoned countless pieces of software, countless algorithms, and again, I'm only now having minor luck. Minor luck. And that's from essentially making my own quote-unquote library of words. And for this unit, and again, it's certainly far, far from perfect, but I'm only making some leeway now, uh, I'm able to detect the words up, move, and down. And there is some confusion sometimes. Uh, I haven't perfected it by any means. In fact, I don't think I'll honestly ever perfect this. But uh, I've only recently started picking up the software again, so I'm really going to be focusing some, some of my spare time in the next few weeks trying to get this to work as accurately as humanly possible. Not there yet. Anyhow, what it does is that when I speak into it, if, if, uh, if the word is correct, if it recognizes it properly, this LED will light up. Red for up, yellow for move, and green for down. So you'll have to pardon me. Uh, if it does screw up, a lot of the time it won't recognize anything. Uh, and sometimes there will be a mix-up and the wrong LED will light up. I'm going to hopefully have some good luck here, so let's plug it in. Power it up. All the LEDs will light up. These are the three LEDs we're talking about. So down, move, and... Or, sorry, up, down, and move. Up, move, and down. Up. Up. Move. Down. Down. So I'm going to stop it right there. Because <laughs> that was actually the best luck I've had uh, with it. it. Again, it's it's really buggy. I showed you the best case scenario right there. Uh, might as well leave you with a, a good note. Uh, what I do is I actually use these eight LEDs right here to show me 8-bit data during the debug process. And my piece of code right now has about 14 subroutines that actually aren't being used. And that's because I go back and forth between algorithms and trying out new things. But uh, eventually, if I'm able to tune this the way I want and, and get the software working nicely, and I want it for it to be reliable because I want people to be able to use it down the road, uh, what I'll do is I'll be able to save... Uh, words essentially into EEPROM memory so that uh, so that you can essentially train a word and it'll save it into EEPROM memory but I'm not there yet uh, I've got a lot more uh, a, a lot more processing to do a lot more coding to do and a lot more testing to do but trying this over and over and over again with no external EEPROM has been probably the most difficult thing I've ever I've ever done, and I've had very little luck with it over the years. And usually, usually if I really want something, I can I, I usually end up getting it to work the way I want to. But this has been a huge challenge, and I just wanted to share it with you because, uh, despite the fact that it is not optimal at this point, uh, it's it, it's getting on its way. So I'm hoping with a little bit of luck that within a few weeks I. It gets better and better. Anyhow, I'm rambling on. It's it's late. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe if you're interested. And check out our Kickstarter campaign below. Thanks again, guys.